all questions. Question oral, the honourable member for Wellington, Halton Hill. Mr. Speaker, members of the government said earlier today in the House that I had known for two years about the specific threat that a PRC diplomat in Toronto was gathering information to target my family. That is false. I'll categorically state again for the record that the briefing, the defensive briefing of two years ago in June of 2021 was general in nature. It did not contain any information about the specific threat that a PRC diplomat in Toronto, Mr. Weijo, was targeting my family. Will the Prime Minister correct the record to stop the spread of this misinformation? The Honourable Minister for Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, I want to assure my colleague opposite that we take um, the concerns that he has expressed and that have been ex expressed in public with regards to foreign interference and the targeting of himself and his family extremely seriously, which is why we will continue to work with him, provide him with briefings. I would also point out, Mr. Speaker, that earlier today we tabled the 2022 CSIS report, where the United States, among other things, that CSIS provided briefings to 49 federal parliamentarians, and by working with everybody, we can protect our democratic institutions. I want to remind the honourable members. The honourable member, the di well, I'm not going to say honourable member. Did he want to withdraw that, please? Do you want to withdraw that? No. This is right. Grand Prairie Mackenzie. The, you do not respect the chair. The chair will not recognize you while you're in this house. Mr. The Honorable Member for Wellington Halton Hills, please continue. Mr. Speaker, I've just been informed by the National withdraw and apologize the chair will not recognize you for the for the next well no until you do indefinitely the honorable member for wellington halton hills Mr. Speaker, I've just been informed by the National Security Advisor that the CSIS intelligence assessment of July 20th 2021 was sent by CSIS to the relevant departments and to the National Security Advisor in the PCO. This report contained information that I and other MPs were being targeted by the PRC. This contradicts what the Prime Minister said yesterday. He said CSIS made the determination that it wasn't something that needed to be raised to a higher level because it wasn't a significant enough concern. Will the Prime Minister correct the record that this report and information was sent to the departments and to the Privy Council oh, office? Here, here. The Honourable Minister of Public Service. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank my colleague for sharing that update with this chamber. I can also assure him that, as the Prime Minister said, and I said earlier this week, that we found out on Monday of this week, which is why we acted very quickly and decisively to reach out directly to the member for Wellington Halton Hills, make sure that he was offered a briefing, had that briefing happen, and we will continue to work with him to address and mitigate any concerns around foreign interference, because every member in this chamber deserves to be able to do their work in representing their constituencies in a matter that is safe and secure. Yep. The Honourable Member for Wellington, Halton Hills. Mr. Speaker, CSIS has been advising the government, the departments, the Privy Council Office, the National Security Advisor, Deputy Ministers, that foreign agents in Canada, foreign diplomats in Canada, are presenting a threat to Canadian MPs in this House of Commons. In fact, the 2022 intelligence report of CSIS today says that these threat actors must be held accountable for their clandestine activities. And we also will continue to inform national security stakeholders and all Canadians about foreign interference. So why is the government not listening to the advice of CSIS and not listening to the advice in the reports that are being distributed here? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, taking concrete action, and in fact, as uh, my colleague, I hope, would know, the Minister for Global Affairs earlier today summoned the Chinese ambassador to ensure that we're 
clear about any consequences around hostile activities or foreign interference, and that is very much consistent with Canada's strong record in condemning this kind of behaviour. Moreover, we'll continue to work with all parliamentarians to protect the people that work in this chamber so we can uphold our democracy. Honourable Member from Megantic-Lerable. Mr. Speaker, it's a dark day for democracy. R rarely have we seen a political party fall so far so fast. A member of this House is the victim of intimidation from Beijing, and the members for Winnipeg North and Kingston and the Islands, on behalf of this government, on behalf of this Prime Minister, have continued the trend and are now conspiring against our Conservative colleague. They're spreading disinformation, and they should be ashamed. Why are they defending Beijing instead of a Canadian member of Parliament. When will the Prime Minister finally apologize for the unconscionable attitude of his political party? The Honourable Minister of Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, I would like to reassure my colleague that we share the concerns of the member for Wellington Halton Hills, and that is why we offered him a briefing. CSIS has delivered that briefing. We're going to continue to offer him all the support he needs and to all members who work in this House of Commons to protect our democratic institutions. The Honourable Member for Megan Disinformation, disinformation, disinformation. The member for Wellington Halton Hills learned today that the memo from CSIS, which stated that he was clearly a victim of intimidation on the, by a diplomat in the consulate in, in Toronto, had been transferred to just about everyone on the Liberal size. And they did nothing. They didn't expel any diplomat. And they continue to spread disinformation. When will they finally apologize, Mr. Speaker? They should be ashamed to even attend their, con their convention. The Honourable Minister of Public Safety of uh, Foreign Affairs. Mr. Speaker, I understand the frustration, the fear uh, on the part of our colleague and uh, the fact that he and his family were targeted by the Beijing government. And that is why we have always, we will always say that any form of foreign interference is unacceptable. Now, that is why my uh, deputy minister today summoned the Chinese ambassador. And, Mr. Speaker, if I may continue to speak uh, without uh, my colleague interrupting me, if I may continue to express myself, Mr. Speaker, what we also said. The, de the Honourable Member for Saint-Jean. Mr. Speaker, a new development, according to the Prime Minister, it was CSIS that didn't inform a member of the opposition that he was being threatened by China. But Richard Fadden, former head of CSIS, demolished this excuse in the Globe and Mail. He explained that not only was the memo found by the media sent to the Prime Minister's staff, but also to foreign affairs and public safety. So, at the very least, the Prime Minister and two ministers got that memo. So why did the Prime Minister keep it a secret? The Honourable Minister of Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, let's be clear. It was not until Monday this week that the Prime Minister, myself, and the government members were informed of the concerns regarding the uh, uh, member for Wellington Halton Hills. And after that, we took action. We offered a briefing to the member on the other side, and we are going to continue to work together with all members in this House to protect our democratic institutions. The Honourable Member for St. Jean. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister is blaming CSIS, but he's been ignoring their warnings for years. Even before the 2019 election, CSIS warned him that a Liberal candidate was perhaps supported by China. He turned a blind eye. Then CSIS said that the same Liberal was discussing the two Michaels with Beijing. He turned a blind eye. And then in 2021, CSIS said that China was threatening an opposition member, and he turned a blind eye. He was only interested now because the info was leaked to the media. Is it worthy of a member of Five Eyes to blame his own intelligence service for his voluntary blindness? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, the government is working very closely with our uh, allies 
including uh, G7, the Five Eyes, and that is why we created a protocol to fight disinformation, and that is why we're going to continue to work with all parliamentarians to fight foreign interference with resources, but this is not a partisan issue. This is a cross-Canada issue, and all parla parliamentarians need to stand in solidarity to, to, to solidarity to protect our democratic institutions. The minister has been the leader of the Liberal Party for 10 years, and in those 10 years, there's been a lot of broken promises and empty words, in particular when it comes to housing. The Prime Minister promised to make housing more affordable, and it's been the opposite. It's become more expensive than ever before. Now, at the same time, profiteers have been making more money than ever before. So when will the Prime Minister take the housing crisis seriously and acknowledge that we are in an emergency situation that needs urgent action to fix? Here, here. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Mr. Colleague, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to thank my colleague for his question. We share the same goal, which is to increase the housing supply for all Canadians in this country, and that is exactly what we did with the National Housing Strategy. We invested more money. We also invested in the right to housing, and we're going to continue to work for all Canadians. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yes, but housing costs have become higher than ever. It's been 10 years that uh, the Prime Minister has been in office, and his he has completely failed in addressing the, the housing crisis. He doesn't walk the talk, Mr. Speaker. It's clear that there is a crisis in our housing system. So when will this government finally take this crisis seriously and fix the problem? Oh. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I'd like to thank my colleague for his question. But in Quebec, we, when you talk about walking the talk, it's because uh, they are lacking in arguments. Mr. Speaker, this national housing strategy uh, got 400,000 people or rather, 36,000 people off, got them off the street. It helped uh, 68,000 people get a home, and we invested $4 billion in, people, in housing for Indigenous people. So we are people who get things done. For Regina Capel. Mr. Speaker, a massive hole has been blown through the Prime Minister's story about the foreign interference campaign and harassment of a, members, a, a member of Parliament's family. We now have confirmation that CSIS informed the National Security Advisor to the Prime Minister that members of Parliament's families were being targeted by an operative from the Communist regime in Beijing and in uh, to, to intimidate that member's family because of a vote in this House of Commons. The Prime Minister claims that he only found out about it on Monday. We now know they've known about this for two years. So why have they allowed this operative to continue this interference campaign, Mr. Speaker? The Honourable Minister of Public Safety. Speaker, as my colleague heard earlier today during this question period, uh, my colleague, the Minister for Global Affairs, has summoned the Chinese ambassador to make it abundantly clear what is legitimate and what is not. And this is consistent with Canada's strong position when it comes to hostile activities, especially with regards to foreign interference. Every single member in this chamber has a right to be able to represent their constituents in complete and total safety. We will continue to work across the aisle with all parliamentarians to make sure that that objective is secure. The Honourable Member for Regina Capel. So, Mr. Speaker, it sounds like the Minister of Public Safety is saying that the Chinese Consular Office had to be told what's allowed and what's not allowed in Canada when it comes to foreign oh, interference. Yeah. And that's their excuse for letting this operative stay. This operative from the Communist regime has been conducting an interference campaign and a harassment campaign targeting a member of Parliament's family because of a vote in this House of Commons. We now know they've known about this for two years. Right. Why yeah. is this operative still in Canada? Yeah. The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, there's, there's one thing I'll agree on, and that is Canada's will always be clear about what the boundaries are and what is right, what is legitimate, and what is lawful, and what is not. And I'll tell you something else, Mr. Speaker, that is a far better approach than the one that the Conservatives proposed when we were getting the two Michaels back, which would have been to capitulate to the People's Republic of China. We'll never do that. We'll always stand up for human rights. We got the two Michaels back, and we'll make sure we protect all members in this chamber so we can uphold our democracy.
The Honourable Member for Brantford Brant. Mr. Speaker, today two high ranking senior Liberals entered this House claiming that the member for Wellington Halton Hills was briefed two years ago about the threatening allegations and simply ignored it. Didn't talk to colleagues, didn't talk to his family in Canada or abroad. This is outrageous, inexcusable, but most importantly, unbelievable. To the Public Safety Minister, Canadians are watching you, sir, and demand an answer. When were you first briefed? I want to remind the honourable members, in order to ask a question, please do not ask directly or speak directly to each other, but speak through the chair. The Honourable uh, Public uh, Safety Minister. Uh, Mr. Speaker, first I would like to uh, reiterate that we do take the uh, concerns that have been expressed by the member for Wellington Halton Hills very seriously. Uh, that's why as soon as we were informed about this issue, which was Monday of earlier this week, uh, we reached out to him directly. We offered a briefing to him. We made sure that that briefing happened and we will continue to work with him and all members to make sure that we can uphold our democracy. The Honourable Member for Brantford Brant. Mr. Speaker, enough of the political spin. An attack on one member is an attack on this entire House. Canadians have questions. It's time for the Public Safety Minister to start answering them, honestly and directly. When was this minister made aware that an agent of Beijing's Toronto office was intimidating a sitting member of this House? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, might I suggest that my colleague across the way listen carefully to an answer that I've given now on multiple occasions. As I said, uh, I was informed on Monday of this week with regards to the specific issue pertaining to the member for Wellington, Halton Hills, and shortly thereafter I reached out to that member. I wanted to make sure that he knew that he would have my support, that he would have our government's support, because we in fact do care for his security, for his family's security. This is not a partisan issue, and making scandalous allegations allegations doesn't advance the debate around national security. We need to work together to protect our democracy. That's what we're committed to doing. The Honourable Member for Louis Saint Laurent. Mr. Speaker, the Minister had just said that he, this is not a partisan issue, but this government made it one. This morning, two parliamentary secretaries who were high-ranking said in this House uh, that the member for Wellington Halton Hills had knew for two years that the Beijing government had targeted him and his family. Earlier, the member just said that this was not true. Mr. Speaker, the, there are, are there, is there anyone on the other side who have a sense of honour and dignity, and will they apologize? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, yes, of course. That is why the government contacted the member for Wellington Halton Hills to express our support for him and his family. We uh, are supporting him, and not only him, but all members in this House. We have to work together in good faith to protect our democratic institutions. The Honourable Member for Louis Saint Laurent. Mr. Speaker, this is outrageous. The victim here is the member for Wellington Halton Hills, and the attacker is the Liberal government this morning. Instead of defending the member, they are attacking him. That's the reality. That's what happened this morning, not once but twice, both by parliamentary secretaries. So I am calling on all the ministers of, of this government, and I know them. I know that they are honourable, and I know they're people of dignity. So which one is going to stand up to apologize to the member for Wellington Halton Hills? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, this government will always defend the rights of uh, members of parliament to do their work safely with no foreign interference, and that is why we put in place mechanisms and powers to do so. That is why we strengthened our level of transparency with the uh, creation of ENSICOP 
to work uh, uh, in a cross-party fashion, because we need to work together to protect our democratic institutions. The Honourable Member for Trois-Rivières. Mr. Speaker, CSIS published its annual report this morning, and it confirms the existence of police stations, Chinese police stations, in Quebec and in Canada. It also confirms that China has been bullying its di diaspora with— uh, agents from its public safety department, and it confirms that Beijing is seeking to influence nomina candidate nominations for elections and to influence their policy stances as well by clandestine means. Mr. Speaker, when this info appears in a public report, it's because the Prime Minister has known about it for a long time. So why does nothing move unless there's a leak to the media? The Honourable Minister. The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, I would like to thank my colleague for shedding light on the excellent work that CSIS has done, which uh, uh, in its uh, report tabled today, and the report indicates that CSIS offered 49 briefings to members of parliament in from this House, and that is a concrete example of how we can do work to protect our democratic institutions. The Honourable Member for Trois-Rivières. Mr. Speaker, on, speaking of newspapers, the minister said that the article in the Globe and Mail was false when it said that the government had been informed that a member of the opposition had been targeted by threats from China. Today, all of a sudden, he's changing his tune and confirmed that the information, in, information existed, but it was CSIS who didn't tell him. So the information does exist, and the briefing note revealed by the Globe and Mail specified clearly that China could target a number of members of parliament. It was in, written in English, Canadian MPs with and asks, are there other members? Who are they, and have they been warned? The Minister. The Honourable Minister of Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, the issue of foreign interference is not new. It has existed for years, and that is why, since our government came to power. We have introduced new, new powers uh, for CSIS. We have in, invested additional resources. And with NCIRA and, and NCICOP, we have strengthened the level of, transpa of transparency. And that is how best to protect our democratic institutions. The Honourable Member for Laurentier de la Belle. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister was informed in 2021 that a member of the opposition was targeted by threats from China, and he did nothing. Today, he will neither confirm nor deny the information obtained by the Globe and Mail that China could be targeting other members of parliament. All we want is to tell him, is for him to tell us yes or no, are there other member of, members of parliament and are they aware? That is why the prime minister does not deserve our trust in the matter of Chinese interference. He does not want to shed any light on the matter. So when will a, finally a public inquiry be set up? The Honourable Minister. The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker. We have made investments, and we trust our agents who work in matters of uh, national security to do a good job and to protect all parliamentarians in this House. There, it's not easy. There are challenges. But if we can work together, we can better protect our democratic institutions. The Honourable Member for St. Albert. Central Okanagan Smilkmi Nicola. Okay. Here in today's debate, two members of the Liberal government have claimed that the member for Wellington Halton Hills had known for two years that his family was being targeted by Beijing operatives on Canadian soil. That is categorically false, Mr. Speaker. Those members should be ashamed for their victim blaming, blaming and trying to shift responsibility away from the Prime Minister, who has not stood up for Canada and for Canadians. If the Prime Minister won't expel these Liberals from his own caucus for promoting conspiracy theories and disinformation, will he very at least expel these communist operatives who are still in Canada, Mr. Speaker? Will they? The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, I, I, have to, I have to rise in my place because I think it's important for us to take a step back and recognize right now that as Russia and China, yes, target this House and all democratic places everywhere, there is absolutely no question that this government, and I would say no government in the history of Canada, that would see a threat against any parliamentarian as anything other than a threat against every single person in this House. The assertion that anything else is the case 
is ridiculous. All of us stand firm and resolute against the threat to democracy. It is absolutely a threat against us all, and we will rise to the hour every time. The Honorable member for Chilliwack Hope. Liberals have not only failed to do anything about the fact that a diplomat from Beijing has targeted a member of parliament and his family because of how he voted in the House of Commons, Today, they've stooped to a disgusting new low. The Liberal MPs from Kingston and the Islands and Winnipeg North have both stood in this House to imply that it is the MP for Wellington Halting Hills who himself is to blame for the government's inaction. Will the Prime Minister rise in his place and apologize for these despicable false claims coming from these Liberal MPs? The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, what we can agree on unequivocally is that it is disgusting. The Honourable Government House Leader, please continue. Mr. Speaker, what we can agree on unequivocally is that a targeting of a member of Parliament's family is an act beyond beyond anything we can imagine. Every single one of us have dedicated our lives to democracy. We have seen ourselves... Okay. I've gotten up twice already. The third time I'm getting up, whoever's next from that party is going to go to the end, and we're going to start scrambling things. Not scrambling, exchanging. It's going to go to the back end of the line, and we'll let the next person, who's last, come in her place. So I'm going to ask everyone to be quiet and be respectful, ask questions quietly, and hear qu answers quietly as well. The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, I don't know how many members of this chamber have been named and targeted by Russia. That number is high. I don't know how many members have been targeted by other foreign powers, but I do know this, that there are forces right now that would see democracy piled under the dirt, that would attack our democracy, and that we need to stand shoulder to shoulder, as we do with the member for Wellington. Honorable député de Be the Honourable Member for Bellechasse, Les Echemin Lévis. I'm ready. Liberal MP from Winnipeg North said that the member from Wellington Halton Hills yeah. has known about the threats against him for two years. That, that is categorically false. Yeah. The Liberal MP from Kingston and the Islands said that the MP for Wellington Halton Hills was briefed on these specific threats two years ago. This is categorically false. Liberals are now targeting the MP who himself has been targeted by Beijing. So when will the Prime Minister get up and apologize for these Liberal MPs spreading these outright lies? Member for Chilliwack Hope re withdraw his statement. Very good. Let me consult with the table and see exactly what we can do about that. not allowed in the House. It's not parliamentary. So I'm going to give the Honourable Member one more chance and then uh, we'll move on and uh, uh, we're not going to have many people left to ask questions. The Honourable Member for Ch Chilliwack Hope, will he withdraw? Mr. Speaker, I stand by what I said. Good. The Honourable Member for Chilliwack Hope will not be recognized by the Chair until he withdraws. The Honourable Member for Vancouver East. The Liberals abandoned their responsibility to build social housing and Canadians are paying the price. 
under this prime minister, the cost of a home has nearly doubled. Successive liberal and conservative governments allow corporate landlords to buy up affordable housing stock and jack up the cost of housing for renters and homeowners alike. Will the liberals stop treating housing as a commodity and commit to building at least 500,000 units of social housing and co-op housing so that families can find a home that they can afford? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary of the Minister of Housing. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'd like to thank my colleague for her question. We agree about the challenges having to do with housing supply throughout the country. But my colleague knows that we have made historic investments since this government was elected, starting with the very first national housing strategy. We brought in 180,000 new housing unit units. We avoided having many people end up in the street. And I agree with her that there is still a, a lot more to do. Vancouver Kingsway. The Liberals promised universal public pharma care in 1997. Since then, countless committees and commissions, including this government's own Hoskins report, have advised that single-payer pharmacare is the only way to go. But Canadians are still waiting for this Liberal government to keep their promise. While the Liberals protect big pharma's profits, the NDP is fighting to deliver public pharmacare so Canadians get the medicine they need. Yes. Yeah. After a quarter century of delay, will this minister finally commit to implementing universal public pharmacare? The Honourable Minister of Health. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Speaker. Uh, very, very grateful for the question. Very grateful for the opportunity to speak to what we are doing, indeed, to increase accessibility, affordability, and appropriateness of drug use in Canada. Mentioning the launch just a few weeks ago of the strategy for drugs for rare diseases, a half a billion dollar investment every one of the next three years to make sure that children, in particular, and other people living with drug with their rare diseases have access to those the very important drugs. The Canada, Canada, Canada Drug Agency, which is going to be set up quickly to set up a national formulary again to reduce the de Longueuil. The Honourable Member for Longueuil Charlemagne. Mr. Speaker, this week several regions in Quebec were hard hit by floods. We were very saddened to learn that two firefighters in the Charlevoix region lost their lives while they were trying to help re residents who were in danger. I send my full condolences to Christopher and Regis Lavoie's families in this difficult period. Can the Minister of Emergency Preparedness tell this House about the measures taken by the federal government to help communities affected by these floods? Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank my colleague, the member from Longueuil, Charles Lebar, for her question and also for her, 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 her and join her in her condolences. Our deepest condolences, Mr. Speaker, go to the families of firefighters Christopher and Bridges Lavoie. They went out in the middle of serious flooding to do their jobs and to save lives, and we mourn their loss and we recognize their sacrifice. And as Charles Lavoie and the Quebec region begins to recover from these floods, I have reached out to Minister Bonadel to offer our, both our condolences and our support. We are monitoring the flooding conditions very carefully across the province. We'll continue to stand ready to ensure the province has the assistance that it needs in response and in recovery. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for St. Albert, Edmonton. The Minister of Foreign Affairs has said that she is assessing interests in determining whether to expel the Beijing diplomat who arranged to punish the family of the member for Wellington, Halton Hills. The Minister has a choice to make because the number one priority of this government ought to be the safety and security of Canadians. And by allowing this Beijing thug to remain in Canada, they are putting Chinese Canadians at risk. So when will they get their priorities straight and send them packing today? The Honourable Minister for Foreign Affairs. We will not never tolerate it, and that's exactly what I said to my counterpart when I met with him a month ago. And that's also why we summoned the Chinese ambassador a bit earlier today. Now, Mr. Speaker, we're also, as a thoughtful government, assessing all the interests that are at stake. Why? Because we know, based on the to Michael's experience, that 
when it comes to the PRC, they will take action and will have an impact on our diplomatic, consular and economic interests. That being said, all options are on table, including the expulsion of diplomats. Thank you so much. The Honourable Member for St. Albert Edmonton will now be last. We'll now go to the Honourable Member for Kitchener Centre. Through the Ontario government is actively looking to go backwards in the climate fight by building and expanding natural gas-fired electricity plants. Natural gas is no climate solution. The federal government must step in to ensure that Ontario doesn't undo hard-fought gains in the midst of a climate crisis. Their upcoming clean electricity uh, regulations must deter Pro, uh, must deter provinces from this kind of climate backsliding. Will the minister commit to making these regulations stringent enough to stop na uh, natural gas expansion in Ontario? The Honourable Minister of the Environment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank my honourable colleague for his, for his question. Uh, we made a commitment during the last election campaign to have a net zero grid by 2035 in Canada. Canada already has a grid that is 80 percent, more than 80 percent, non emitting, Mr. Speaker, and there are a number of provinces doing amazing things when it comes to renewable energy. Let's talk about Alberta, which in 2016 committed to eliminate coal by 2030. Alberta will have eliminated coal this year, Mr. Speaker. This is what we're aiming to do across the country. Well Member for our Caribou, Prince George. The Asian cooperative Zhao Wei sought information and the whereabouts of the family from the, me the Member of Parliament from Wellington, Wellington Halton Hills so that they could make an example of him. This is a direct threat against a sitting member of this House and their family. Zhao Wei is still in this country. The response from the Liberals today is to blame a sitting member of Parliament. Victim blame. Mr. Speaker, when will the, the Prime Minister do his job, stop blaming victims, send a message to Beijing, and send Zhao Wei home? Hey, hey. The Honourable Minister of Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, any suggestion that we don't have care or concern for the member for Wellington Halton Hills is absolutely absurd. I've reached out to that member. We made sure that we got a briefing. We'll continue to support him and all members in this chamber because every member of parliament, indeed every parliamentarian, has a right to represent their constituencies. We need to do this work together so that we can push back against the forces of foreign interference and uphold our democracy. The Honourable Member for Belchasse Les Malévy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. According to the Vienna Convention, it is possible to expel diplomats. The Prime Minister should send that memo to caucus. But the Minister of Foreign Affairs can't seem to make up her mind. And Liberal parliamentary secretaries are blaming the member for Wellington Halton Hills, a man who is very respected in this House. Everything is upside down. Instead of turning aside, will this prime minister expel that diplomat, diplomat who should be persona non grata? The honorable minister. Mr. Speaker, as I previously mentioned, my honorable colleague for foreign affairs called in the Chinese ambassador to underscore that there are activities that are legitimate and others that are not legitimate and, in fact, that are considered foreign interference, we will continue to condemn what was done to protect our democratic institutions. The Honourable Member for Rivière du Nord. According to the Prime Minister, everyone's going to be glued to their TV this weekend to watch the coronation of Charles III. According to the PM, Canadians are looking forward to celebrating His Majesty's coronation. I'm not sure who he's talking about, but certainly not Quebecers. Now, if he had said Canadians are looking forward to getting rid of the monarchy, that would have been, at the very least, more factual. It's not too late to make things right. When will this government get rid of this passé and anti-democratic institution? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Mr. Speaker, Quebecers are currently facing heavy flooding. They are facing climate change. They are concerned about affordability, 
about the housing crisis. They're concerned about our health system, which is under strain. And yet the Bloc Québécois is spending all this time in this house talking about the monarchy. Our Liberal government is firmly concentrated on the real priorities of Quebecers and all Canadians. The Honourable Member for Rivière-du-Nord. Mr. Speaker, despite that, despite the fact that we're always being told that we should talk about something other than the monarchy, Despite that, the Prime Minister is trying to have us believe that the coronation will be the most popular media event since his hit TV show, La Petite Fille. Yet this government has decided to hand out 30,000 coronation medals. And this government is going to arrive in London with a couple dozen representatives plus staff, which is once again going to cost us an arm and a leg. So if the monarchy isn't a priority for this government, can the minister explain why there's this whole media circus around it. The Honourable Minister of Innovation, Mr. Speaker, am I dreaming? For those who are watching at home, everything is upside down. The Bloc Québécois is using up our time in the House to talk about the royalty and the monarchy and the coronation. It's so confusing at a time when there is flooding in Quebec at a time when we're talking about cell phone fees, health, and all sorts of other important things, suddenly the Bloc Québécois has decided it wants to talk about the monarchy. On this side of the House, we will continue to work for Quebecers about things they really care about. The Honourable Member for lévis le -Binière. Mr. Speaker, crime, chaos, drugs, and disorder, that is the legacy of a Liberal Prime Minister, his legacy to Canadian society over the last eight years. Mr. Speaker, letting out violent reoffenders and the decriminalization of hard drugs are increasing violent crime and overdoses in our communities. Why is this Prime Minister so determined to send us into a dead end? The Honourable Minister of Justice. Mr. Speaker, Canadians deserve to feel safe and to be safe. That's exactly why we are working hard with the provinces and territories to strengthen the, to strengthen the parole system. We will continue to take these decisions under our jurisdiction, and we will find solutions by working together, because these are complex issues. We are working together, and I hope to have more news shortly. The Honourable Member. Mr. Speaker, at a time when everything is costing more, at a time when Canadians are suffering and struggling, the Prime Minister has taken not one but five luxury trips abroad to get a nice tan and live the high life in New York. It's a scandal, Mr. Speaker. Housing costs have doubled. Instead of wasting our money, what will this Prime Minister do to reduce inflation throughout Canada? The Honourable Minister of Innovation. Mr. Speaker, do you know what's a scandal for people who are watching us today? It's to know that the Conservatives are going to vote against the budget, Mr. Speaker. A budget that was designed for Canadians throughout the country. Canadians listened, we listened to Canadians, rather. They told us that the most important thing is the cost of living, the cost of groceries, and we are presenting a grocery rebate for millions, 11 million Canadians who will benefit from that. Canadians have asked us to help them with health care and dental care. They've asked us to invest in tomorrow's economy. We even brought Volkswagen to Canada to build our country, and that's what a responsible government would do. For Hastings, Lennox and Addington. Well, Beijing agents strike at the heart of Canadian democracy, imperiling our freedoms by threatening our democratically elected members and their families. The Prime Minister is off on lavish Jamaican junkets and footing Canadians with a bill. After eight years of ineffective and inept governance, Canadians are out of money, and the Prime Minister is not only out of touch, but also often out of the country. Mr. Speaker, when will this government finally start taking responsibilities seriously or get out of the way so we can start tackling the crises that are paralyzing Canadian society? The Honourable Leader, our Government Vice Leader. As I have said to this House on many occasions, uh, the, the member is right. 
the Prime Minister took a vacation with his family uh, over Christmas. Uh, he did so uh, staying at a friend's house. Uh, if the member is either asserting that the Prime Minister shouldn't be able to take a, a, a vacation with his family at Christmas, or is the member asserting that if he does so, he doesn't have security, which was the vast preponderance of the cost. It seems that they want to torque and play partisan games with a, a family vacation that the Prime Minister took. I think that's inappropriate, Mr. Speaker. Member, l'honorable député de Pontiac. The Honourable Member for Pontiac. Mr. Speaker, everyone in Canada deserves to be safe. Tomorrow will be Red Dress Day, which is an opportunity to remember the tragedy of women and girls who are missing or murdered. We must all do more. Can the Minister of Crown Indigenous Relations tell this House about the work that this government is carrying out to protect women and girls in Indigenous communities? The Honourable Minister of Crown Indigenous Relations. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to thank my colleague for this question. We are all responsible when it comes to resolving the systemic issues that are continuing to feed this national crisis and in order to implement calls to justice. That's why Budget 2023 invested $120 million to implement the National Action Plan, support the National Families and Survivors Circle, and create a redress alert. We are determined to continue working with survivors, their families and communities to continue this important work. Calgary, Rocky Ridge. Mr. Speaker, while this Prime Minister is living it up, taking international celebrity selfies, a generation of Canadians are giving up on home ownership. Down payments have doubled, rents have doubled, down, uh, mortgage payments have doubled. Builders can't build because it takes years just to get permits in Canada's large cities. When will this government do something about the big city gatekeepers who are choking Canadians out of access to a home? Yep. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Housing. Mr. Speaker, I am a former municipal councillor, and for the first time in this House, a leader of a party has denigrated and insulted a duly elected municipal government. When you insult and denigrate, well, that's certainly not the way to get more housing built. I am disturbed about the fact that Conservative members, former mayors, I am shocked that they did not bring their own leader back into line. Mr. Speaker, we'll always stand up for Canadians who can't access homes. The Prime Minister has been on five lavish trips already this year, including a vacation worth $80,000 paid for by Trudeau Foundation donors. He's out of touch and Canadians are out of money. The cost of government is driving up the cost of living. A 41 cent a litre tax on gas, groceries and home heating and endless deficits that drive up interest rates, pushing access to housing even further out of reach. When will he get to work and stop making life more expensive? The Honourable Minister for Families. Mr. Speaker, we understand that Canadians are struggling right now and that there is a high cost of living. But unlike the Conservatives, Mr. Speaker, we're actually acting. We have put measures in place like the Canada Child Benefit, like the Climate Action Incentive, like increasing the Guaranteed Income Supplement, like the new grocery rebate. We are actually acting to help Canadian families at this time of struggle where we know what the Conservative playbook was. Send checks to millionaires and make seniors work longer. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, member for Kenora. Mr. Speaker, the fact of the matter is the policies of this government are the very ones that have been driving up inflation and making everything more expensive for Canadians. Now, as grocery prices are rising to the point where people have to turn to food banks, housing prices have doubled and many young people are worried they'll never be able to afford a home. The clawbacks on paychecks are making it so that people who are working harder are falling further behind. While all that is happening, Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister continues to take lavish vacations like his $80,000 trip to Jamaica. Mr. Speaker, when will this Prime Minister finally take responsibility for what he has broken and fix this inflationary crisis? The Honourable Minister for Innovation. 
Mr. Speaker, we will take no lessons from these conservatives who have left the town of St. Thomas and southern western Ontario down, Mr. Speaker. We have let 8,000 workers down, Mr. Speaker. We have let the auto sector down, Mr. Speaker. We'll do what we do best, Mr. Speaker, is to build a future for Canadians. We'll attract investment like Volkswagen. We'll create thousands of jobs. We'll build our auto sector. We'll be in Canada for the 21st century, Mr. Speaker. That's what we will do. The Honourable Member, the Honourable Deputy Halifax West. Uh, Mr. Speaker, in my riding of Halifax West, we know that search and rescue capabilities are critical to those in our fishing industry, to tourism, for the safety of Atlantic Canadians. Canadians need to know that no matter where they are, the Canadian Armed Forces will always answer the call. Could the Minister of National Defence please provide an update on the co co Cormorant helicopter fleet announcement she made in Halifax last week? Well, Minister of National Defence. Mr. Speaker, search and rescue capabilities are at the very heart of the expertise of the Canadian Armed Forces. That is why here, here. last week I was pleased to announce the expansion and upgrade of our Cormorant helicopter fleet, Bravo. which is projected to add 650 jobs That's annually wow. and 79 million dollars to our economy annually, Mr. Speaker. And most importantly, it will ensure that our Canadian Armed Forces are always prepared to answer the call. Bravo. The Honourable Member for Elmwood Transcona. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. The Canadian voting system promises 100% of the power to political parties that get less than 40% of the vote at election time. That's a problem the Prime Minister seemed to have understood in 2015 when he promised to change the voting system. Since then, opposition parties laid out a path forward. He threw that in the bin in the last Parliament. Procedure and House Affairs Committee passed a motion to study this. He ended it by calling an election. Now at the Liberal Convention, there's a motion on the floor to look again at proportional representation. Will he respect the decisions of these democratic decision-making forums, or is he going to put his personal agenda ahead of that once again? The Honourable Minister for Intergovernmental Affairs. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank my colleague from Elmwood Transcona for that question. Uh, we share a number of objectives uh, that he and I have discussed on numerous occasions in terms of increasing the ability of Canadians to access voting, ensuring, for example, that campus voting is something that's prioritized by Elections Canada. We are always looking at ways, Mr. Speaker, to ensure that our electoral system is accessible, is reflective of the choices Canadians make in their governments. And, Mr. Speaker, I will continue to work with my colleague from Elmwood Transcona and others on ensuring that we have the best electoral system that we could possibly have. Honourable Member for St. Albert, Edmonton. Speaker, by allowing Zhao Wei to stay, the Liberals have given Beijing the green light to attack the safety and security of Chinese Canadians with impunity. Article 9 of the Vienna Convention gives the Minister of Foreign Affairs the unfettered discretion to expel any diplomat at any time for any reason. There is no excuse for delay. What is she waiting for? Will she expel this Beijing thug today? Yeah. The Honourable Minister. The Minister for Global Affairs has been abundantly clear that she has convened the Chinese ambassador to make it clear where the boundaries are and obviously will continue to condemn any foreign or hostile activities here in Canada. What we've seen today, Mr. Speaker, has been shameful. We've seen unparliamentary language from the Conservatives. Why? Because they'd rather highlight the problem rather than be part of the solution. How do we know that, Mr. Speaker? Because instead of supporting this government and giving CSIS the tools they need, they opposed it. And instead of supporting the Committee of Parliament, Parliamentarians, they continue to play Jekyll and Hyde with that committee. They need to stop politicizing this issue and get behind the cause of the government to defend our institutions. I'm afraid that's all the time we have today for question period. I wish to draw the attention of members to the presence in the gallery of Her Excellency Meritel Batet Lamagna, President of the Congress of Deputies of the Kingdom of Spain.
I would also like to draw attention of the members to the presence in the gallery of His Excellency Vlado Mirosevic, President of the Chamber of Deputies of the Republic of Chile. And lastly, I would like to draw the attention of members to the presence in the gallery of Mr. Karim Khan, Chief Prosecutor of the International Criminal Court. discussions among representatives of all parties in the House, I understand that there is an agreement to observe a moment of silence in memory of the two firefighters who lost their lives in Saint-Urbain, Quebec. I invite honourable members to rise. Merci. Thank you.